Hi guys, Mr. Wilson here and welcome to the first video of day one which is how to find the product of prime factors. So factors are when we think of two numbers and multiply together to make a number, for example 14 times 10. But what we've got to do is keep writing it only using prime numbers. So we do this using what we call a prime factor tree. So you can choose any two numbers at all here that multiply together to make 140. Now because it ends in a zero, I'm going to go for the obvious, 14 times 10. Now, neither of these are what we call primes or prime factors, so we keep going until we just get prime factors. So two numbers that multiply together, so the factors of 10, 5 and 2. Now both of those are primes, so I'm going to circle them. And if I do the same here, I get 2 and I will get 7. Now, I've finished, I can't go any further because I've got everything as a prime number. Remember that number 1 is not a prime. So what I've actually got is, I've got two, in, two of these 2s, so I'm going to write them in numerical order, and then a 5, and then a 7. It's really, really important you do this next bit and check that it equals 140. So I like to start with the bigger numbers first, so 7 times 5 is 35, double that, 70, double that again, 140. So that is correct. Now a lot of people put pluses. We haven't added at all, so don't. And I'll show you, you check it to make sure it works. And some people put commas as well. That makes no sense. They're factors, they're multiplication. Let's do another one. So again, this ends in a zero. I'll show you some more in a minute that don't. So 72 and 10. This is the same as last time, so I'm just going to pop the 5 and 2 there. So I know that 8 times 9 is 72, but neither of those are prime, so we're going to keep going. So that's 4 and 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. And to make 9, it's 3 times 3. So in this one, we need, well, it's going to be a little bit longer. So let's see how many 2s we've got. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. We've got two threes, so times three times three, and we've got a five as well. And it's really important you check, so nine times five, 45, 90, 180, 360, 720. Now, they don't often do this anymore, but they can. They can say product of prime factors, but in index form. That means introduce indices. So here, we can write this as two squared, and here we can introduce this as 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 2 to the power of 4 times 3 squared times 5. So if it mentions index form, it simply means write using indices. Now, here's number 60 and 96. So let's do this again. But then I'm going to take this one a little bit further. So I'm going to do 5 and 12 just to show you that it doesn't have to be the 10 times table. So that's prime. 4 and 3 makes 12, and 3 is prime. And then we have 2, and we have 2. So that is 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. 96, I know that is 12 times 8. You can always take the easy option and half it, but I like to break it up with bigger chunks. It normally makes this next process a bit easier. But any times tables that you want, and I'm going through this pretty fast now, but this shouldn't be the first time you've looked at this topic. This is purely meant for a revision video. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's actually another one I missed. And 3. Now, sometimes they take it a little bit further. And what they can say is what is the highest common factor of these two numbers? Now, sometimes that is just the question. Or sometimes there's a part A which asks you to do this. And then a part B. But even if it doesn't give you this, I would still use it to find the highest common factor. So I'm just going to move my paper up a tad. And I like to do this using what we call a Venn diagram. So I'm going to use this first circle on the left, and that's going to allow me to represent the number 60. And this circle on the right is going to represent number 96. Now, the highest common factor is what is common to both. Well... It's this bit here, what is common to both of these two numbers. Well, they both have two twos, so I can put those in there. And they both have a three, so I can put that in there. So the highest common factor is this bit inside, common to both, 
multiplied together. So it's 2 times 2, which is 4, times 3, which is 12. So we say the highest common factor is 12. Now, there are other numbers left over, so what we do is put them in the circle. So 60 has an extra 5. I can't put it in here because this is also the number 96. So there's all the numbers for 60. And for this one, is an extra t three twos. Now, to find the lowest common multiple, once you enter it into the Venn diagram, it's actually everything multiplied together. So it's I like to start with the bigger numbers. So 5 times 3 is 15, 30, 60, 120, 240, 480. So everything multiplied together. My advice is always leave the doubling till the end. Now, let's take a look at some really tricky type of questions. So, there you go. So, sometimes they say, right, Bill is thinking of two numbers. The highest common factor of the two numbers is 3. The lowest common multiple is 45. So, how I would approach, and it says, what could these numbers be? So, how I would approach it is I would draw my Venn diagram, but we don't know what the numbers are to put in. Apart from, I know the highest common factor is this. And this is a prime number, so it only means 3 is in there. And it means when I multiply everything in here together, I get the 45. So if I take the 3 out, 3 times what is 45? Well, I know that's 15. So I've just got to put two numbers, which, remember, can only be prime numbers that make 15. So it has to be 5 and 3. So if I put the 5 there, let's put the 3 there as well. It means this number here would just be 3, and this number here would be 9 times 5, which is 45. So the two numbers could have been 45 and 3. If I did it ever so slightly differently, so if I put the 5 there and the 3 there, then this circle would be 15, and this circle would be 9. So there's quite often multiple answers. Now, this one below is slightly harder because of this word here. So we have a highest common factor of 6. And I can't put a 6 here. Please remember that that is not a prime number. And we use this method when we're writing each number as products of primes. So 2 times 3 gives me 6. That means my highest common factor will be 6. And it's a multiple of 15. So the first multiple of 15 is 15. So 6 times something is 15. Well, that doesn't work. So let's go to 30. So 6 times 5 is 30, and 5 is prime. So let's put the 5 there. So this circle would be 6, and this circle would be 30. So that could be a possible answer. Now, there are lots of possible answers to this one. For example, if I make it 60, I'd need another 2 there. I could put it here or here, creating two different numbers. So hopefully that's made sense. If you get anything on those topics, make sure you understand.